Hey folks, I thought I'd uh, show you my swarm catching uh, boxes and um, show you how to set up your own. Um, this box I designed and made um, as an ultralight box because when they get full of bees they're really heavy. Um, so I wanted the box as light as I could get away with but at the same time uh, be the proper dimension. And for uh, properly catching swarms, you want a box roughly the size of a deep, um, a 10 frame deep. This, is, this information comes from Thomas Seeley, uh, Honeybee Democracy. It's basically over 3,000 um, cubic inches, I think it is. Um, anyway, um, so the box, the first thing for weight savings is this ultralight lid. It weighs maybe three pounds tops. It is made with a thin piece of plot, very thin piece of plywood, like one eighth of an inch um, with two three quarter inch sides. And then for waterproofing, I've got this really thin uh, kind of rubber membrane that is a uh, masonry sealer. Don't ask me where to get it because actually I, sw I swapped and managed to score a couple of rolls. Um, on to the rest of the box. So um, the sides of the box are only three eighths of an inch thick. That's for weight savings. The front and back, because I need the rest frames on it, are still the same three quarter inch material. It has handles only in the front and the aft, uh, none on the sides. The wood's too thin for that. And then we have this nice big slider. You definitely want one of these because I, all I have to do to, once I catch a swarm, is just spin it to vent and I'm good to go. So, but for setup, um, you, ha you drill a one and a quarter inch diameter hole. That gives you roughly four square inches, which is what the bees, bees want. Um, you want a one and a quarter inch diameter hole and you want to put you a nail on the, uh, drive a nail inside that in the middle. That will prevent any birds from using it as a new home. Um, also I put in for the bottom is that thin plywood. And I also put in some cedar feet for rock resistance. Um, anyway, so that's the box. Um, it weighs about half that if you were to assemble this equipment from a standard, um, uh, standard deep body. The, uh, I will say this, the deep width is 3 eighths of an inch uh, to allow bee space underneath the frame. So instead of being uh, a standard deep is nine and five eighths. This is a full 10 inch. So enough about the box. Um, let's get on to the important stuff. Now this is the way I bait my hives and I've had great success with it. So I start with a frame of old comb, drawn comb. It doesn't matter how old the comb is. It can be the nastiest black stuff you can ever find. That's fine. Sorry, had a barrel um, pop on me just then. Scared the tickets out of me. Um, so you want a, one frame of drawn comb. Um, preferably something with some propolis on it too. Uh, that gives scent. That'll help attract the bees. Um, here's another frame. That this is this is one of my natural frames. I could use either one of these frames um, to start this hive. This is a, um, which, let me grab another frame and show you. So this started out like this. So this is, I show how to do this in one of my other videos, which is how to do comb honey frames uh, without using sheet foundation. Uh, if you look back on my video list, you'll see it. It's one of the first videos I ever made. So all it is is just a stick milled to the right, di the right width and it's a half an inch. Um, it's a half an inch by a little bit over an eighth and you just drive these sticks in and then coat them with beeswax and the bees will take to that quite well. One of the big mistakes people make is they'll take and they'll fill this thing full of foundation. 
You don't want that. The bees will reject it. They're going to go in and measure the space. So what I do is I put in one frame of drawn comb, not at the very end, but I put normally one over, and then I fill the entire rest of the chamber with just these empty these frames that have nothing on them. That creates a nice big open space, and when the scouts go in, they'll measure that space and say, hey, this is a great place. We'll, let's move here. Um, the other thing that I do, I use um, Swarm Commander, and I recommend if you're going to use uh, if you're going to buy a swarm crowner, this stuff is not cheap, but by far the best deal is to get this spray bottle, and I'll show you why. Um, so all I have to do to apply this stuff is I normally will spray one squirt in the box, and then one squirt right at the entrance like that. That's all you want to do. You don't want to put any more. It will actually repel the bees if you get it too strong. But that entrance that's that this scent at the entrance is what's going to attract the bees from all over and this is what is also going to wash off the fastest so once i get this thing set up and in my tree um, all i have to do is periodically normally after i've already caught a swarm um, is go up and, and reapply this, just one, one spritz and I'm done. I don't mess with inside the hive, I just leave it up on the, uh, up on the shelf and, and it works just fine. Um, and I typically, I recommend that you set up two boxes um, at your whatever location you're gonna use because when you catch a swarm and you're using this method, you don't have to move the box immediately. Matter of fact, you wanna make sure that that queen is laying. So I may not know exactly when that queen has arrived because she's in one of my satellite apiaries. So when, once I say, oh, I've got bees, I'll wait a week. And then, um, and then I'll go back and I'll know, you know that that queen's definitely laying just in case she arrived the day before. Because you don't want to mess with the colony because they can abscond on you if they're not established. But once that queen starts laying, they're good. Um, uh, so... Here's my box. She's assembled and she's ready to go to town. So the only thing I need to do now is uh, put her in a tree. And um, you can make a box any dimension you want, but it's really important that you do it with frames because otherwise the bees go in, they build up, and you waste all of those resources for the colony. It sets them way, way back. So build whatever box you want, but just make sure that you use um, a standard frame setup. I know some people make taller boxes, and they can't keep them as long, but, but the colony builds from the top down. So um, you can put in a box that has five frames, but it's just a bigger space. They'll accept that just fine. Um, just make sure you um, um, set it up so that you've got the same, roughly the same volume as a standard deep box. And I'll go, uh, we'll show you real quick what uh, one of these things looks like um, in place. All right, folks, you can see uh, my trap up in the tree. Um, and if you look over here, you can see one of my stands up in the tree without the without the box in it. So um, this one's ready to go. The main thing is you want it um, facing southeast, east or south. I mean, I prefer to put mine about southeast, but anywhere in that range, you should be good. As well as you want it in the shade. So I normally pick under a good hardwood tree. This is a white oak. Um, and you also want it with a clear unobstructed view, like there's nothing in the flight path, so there's not a tree in front of it or anything like that. So right here where I'm at, I've got multiple trees that would all be suitable. That tree obviously has one in it, but um, that tree right here is a little too small, but this one would be, this other white oak would be another fine, fine bee tree to, to set up. So, 
anyway um, I've got mine about 12 feet off the ground you do not have to put them that tall but um, it is um, helpful don't don't kill yourself to get the uh, bait box in place just try to do something that's um, comfortable for you if it's six feet off the ground it's better than having no no trap at all so anyway hope you guys enjoyed the video um, and like and subscribe